Now we turn to the world of presidential politics, where Donald Trump says he is now campaigning as a candidate unchained. Trump tweeted yesterday, and I quote, it is so nice that the shackles have been taken off me and I can now fight for America the way I want to, end quote. And in an interview last night, the GOP nominee explained to which shackles he was referring. Shackles are some of the establishment people that are weak and ineffective people within the Republican Party, senators and others, uh, and Paul Ryan, led to a certain extent by so Paul they, Ryan. They were holding uh, being you nasty back? nasty to the nominee. They were holding uh, you not back? Not a question holding back, no, but they're not giving support. They don't give the kind of support. You know, we got more votes, more than 14 million votes, more than anybody in the history of the Republican primaries bill. And they don't give the support that we really need. Okay, now, but, but I'm still I think confused. I'm better off maybe without their support if well, you want you know, to know the truth. Susan Page is the Washington Bureau Chief for USA Today and joins me now on set. Susan, I hate to invoke the phrase lots to unpack, but mm -hmm. um, first of all, the image of shackles is it, quite an interesting one just to invoke on its face. But as we see uh, the reporting now of USA Today that some 26 percent of uh, GOP governors, senators, congressmen are now not supporting a GOP nominee for president. Two questions. How significant is it? And, and what does it mean for the party long term, really November 9th and beyond? So let's remember, this is unprecedented. Yeah. We have never in modern times had more than a quarter of the officials of a party repudiate, refuse to endorse or support their presidential nominee. We have never been here before. And the consequences for the Republican Party, well, we, we knew there was going to be a civil war in the Republican Party after this election was over. It's just started a month early. It's interesting because that number, though, does reflect right now about the support Donald Trump receives from likely GOP voters. It's in the low to mid 70s. That's a number he's got to get up into the 90s. So he can say, I suppose, all he wants. I don't need Paul Ryan. I don't need the support of GOP leadership, and yet it would seem there is a direct correlation between at least need, you know, more than ever before, he's going to need every GOP voter he can find. It is, is there a strategy here? You know, I think his strategy is his primary strategy. When he was running against 13 guys, and if you could get a third of the vote, you were going to win, you were going to have a plurality, you'd defeat everybody else. That's not how it works when you're in a general election. He is now in a situation where he has fired up his core supporters. They are going to turn out, but it does not get him to the numbers that he would need to actually win the White House. Uh, we Obviously, the, this is all fallout in part from that video uh, that was first revealed uh, this past weekend. But when you look at everything that has come to pass here, the attack on John McCain, um, the mocking of a disabled reporter, the attack on a Gold Star family, to name but a few, is why why this and 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 why why now it, you know yesterday i theorized is this like the sign on the highway last gas for 50 miles i mean why is this the off ramp that so many seem to be taking well i think two things one is in some ways it's the straw that breaks the camel's back yeah. uh, in addition it comes at a time when voters are really tuned in even voters who are not following politics every day the other thing is he's describing offenses for which you should be could and should be arrested. He's talking about sexual assault. And that is something different than just provocative rhetoric. Yesterday, uh, 538, the website, Nate Silver, uh, put up a, an electoral map of what it would look like if Donald Trump lost the support of women. And it was a map that was all blue. Um, what, what, what is initial polling suggested will be the ramifications of what was learned this past weekend, even as we saw the early flight of some GOP leaders, then we did see some Hang on, as we heard Barack Obama say yesterday, he finds it inconceivable that somebody could still be endorsing this man for president. But what has been the real politic as it relates to numbers that we're seeing, especially with female voters? Well, we only have early polling. Mm -hmm. We want to see some more come out. But the early polling indicates that women react much more strongly to the uh, the video, the Access Hollywood video, than, than men voters do. A majority of women say it makes them less likely to support oh. Donald Trump. A majority of men say it's not going to make a difference in their vote one way or another. This is uh, very serious. Women make up, by the way, a majority of the electorate. And uh, without the support of women, and especially college-educated white women, 
Republican candidate cannot win the White House. They just can't get to a majority of the vote. They can't get to 270 without winning. Quickly, I, I want to ask you about uh, the John Podesta emails, um, uh, as it might suggest also the continued presence of Russian state actors looking to influence the election. Also, this is what could have passed as another bad week in any other election cycle for the Democratic candidate. This could have qualified as an October surprise in, in any other election year. Is this just going to be drowned out by everything we've just discussed. It is at the moment, and we think there'll probably be more uh, leaked uh, emails to come, and maybe they get more and more explosive. These are unhelpful to Hillary Clinton. They reinforce the idea that she's very cautious and calculating about what she says, not transparent and forthcoming. But it's overwhelmed. It's so overshadowed by some of the things we see with Trump. It's remarkable that uh, she could have the week she's had, at least in a vacuum, and still talk about Georgia and Arizona and, and Utah, uh, just to name a few. Susan Page, as always, really appreciate the insight. Thanks so much.